Friends, today we are going to talk about agriculture marketing, the system, the mechanism, the various channels and how effective they are. Everybody would definitely understand that agriculture marketing is a very cardinal link of supplying the agriculture produce from the producer, the farmers of this country to the customers that is the number of persons of our population who are consuming various agriculture commodities. The marketing of agriculture commodities in India has been traditionally promoted through a network of market yards. The market yards are further regulated by marketing board. The marketing board is again an organization which has been created for the producers that is the sets of farmers to help sell them their farm products and this is essentially funded by the government. The marketing board is a component of the state government. All the state governments through respective legislations in their state legislative assemblies have enacted agriculture market produce committees and starting from the 1950s and to the date there have been almost all states who have enacted the agriculture produce market committee acts. The agriculture produce market committees have also been evolving over a period of time. In 1950, there were about 286 regulated markets and as on date, there are more than 7,500 agriculture regulated markets. This is besides about 21,750 plus rural periodical markets that we have spread around the whole of the country. The regular markets, the regulated markets have a, a defined area of operation where the farmers from a captive area bring their produce and they come to a well designated market yard. The market yard is, uh, is supposed to have various facilities which would facilitate the farmers for selling their produce. The mandis or the market yards are under the control of the state agriculture marketing board. Each agriculture produce market committee has a geographical location. Sometimes there can be more than one mandis in a particular district and at a micro level there are about 7500 regulated markets which are dealing in about 150 plus crops and are spread all over the op operations. Thus from the very prime of Asia of this uh, complex operation, the channels of agriculture marketing have a lot to be desired. Backed up with this is a whole lot of our farmers who are not having adequate infrastructure facilities for post harvest or other practices which makes their movement to mandis a little more complex than what it is uh, desired. The mandi, once the farmer brings his produce to the mandi, there are two types of transactions that take place. The one tra transaction is uh, an open sale that is by an auction process in which the produce which is brought by a farmer is auctioned and there are various producers who give bids to them and then the highest bidder takes away the material. The other is also an approach where the sellers approach the traders who have with them uh, the temporary possession of the material brought by the farmers and then each lot is then negotiated and whatever the price is arrived at, it is sold at this. The whole process is also under a lot of uh, uh, criticism because neither the uh, system of auction which is being practiced is also very transparent. Uh, there have been uh, reported cases where the process of uh, auction, the say of the farmer has not been optimized. It is quite minimal and in many cases, in fact, it would not be wrong to say that in most of the cases, the auction system is largely covered by and guided by the traders and the middlemen, so called middlemen. Now, we have to ensure that how effective this channel becomes. Again, besides the transaction that is the sale which takes place, there are many other uh, issues which need attention. One of this is that when the farmer bring his produce to the mandi, this is he brings it in a very uh, non-optimized uh, uh, lots uh, which 
uh, he is not able to transport and therefore in the process of aggregating at his village level uh, before bringing to the mandi or trying to combine his uh, uh, unit of produce with the other to make it transportable to the mill, there is a lot of wastage. Further, once he brings this uh, produce, there is not enough of storage capacity and more so for a lot of horticulture produce, the our mandis lack uh, cold storage system. So, there is a huge wastage which takes place before even the transaction takes place. In fact, uh, in case of horticulture produce, the wastages go even to the extent of around uh, 30 percent or even in some cases more. Once this produce is brought to the mandi, the, uh, the various operations that take place can be looked upon as uh, uh, in absence of a proper storage, in absence of, uh, uh, of a proper handling which the farmer is not able to do at his own level, he then is at the mercy of the people who are called the market functionaries in the mandis and mandi yards. And despite the whole facility of uh, creating a market in a captive area, the advantages are not being able to be nurtured by the farmers. Take a case of how the things get exploited. We have a case of a farmer who brings, uh, let us say, cabbage at rupees 2 and uh, 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 from his uh, um, uh, farm and he is hardly able to get uh, uh, 2 or 2.50 paisa for, for that per unit or per kg. But immediately after the produce is moved on to the traders, they are able to sell it at about 6 rupees without any value addition which is put to this particular commodity. That means because of a system, because of his not even able to control such factors which are able to bring his produce in a more linear and a transparent way, the uh, a, a lot of profit which should rightfully be due to the former is not able to come and constitute to the former and is taken away by the other persons. This inefficiency caused by the various uh, uh, commission agents if, leads to increase in price level and manipulation. In number of cases, it has been observed that the commission agents or the handling agents for this produce artificially um, promulgate the market as to a price which is not in the advantage of the former, but in their own advantage. Since a lot of storage capacity which is there in mandis is controlled by them, they are able to uh, give a very less price to the farmer who brings his produce, but since he needs ready cash because his holding is small and accordingly his produce is small, the trader takes advantage of that and then he is able to upscale his profits on what essentially is the produce of the farmer and what should have gone to him. And therefore, there exists a huge imbalance between uh, the price that is accurable to the farmer and the price that is being realized by the uh, by the trader. And again, uh, this vacuum is further manipulated by the, the, the trading community, so that uh, even the consumers who if the farmers with an, a very substantial production in almost all areas are not able to <coughs> pass on that uh, advantage of uh, a very substantial production by the Indian farmers of uh, fruits, vegetables and various other things because of this distortion in our uh, uh, mandi system. Therefore, looking at this particular thing, there have been uh, a lot of uh, uh, new initiatives which have been taken up by the government to reform the agriculture market system. One of this is uh, opening of a direct procurement in which the uh, institutions which can be uh, companies, which can be major self-help groups, which can be export houses are encouraged to buy directly from the farmers and the uh, from their uh, doorstep and in which they need not have to essentially and under uh, stress compulsion bring his produce to the mandi yard. This would be beneficial as it eliminates the manipulations of a middleman and here the farmers get a fair worth, 
the direct procurements gives him uh, uh, an opposition to traditional mandis and, and a very fair alternative marketing system. Further, uh, the benefits are that buyer and seller come close to each other, the procurement prices become competitive, the quality is also reflected in what he is selling. Alternatively, if he brings something to the mandi, the quality implications are not very huge and therefore, whatever he is able to get, the quality since quality is not reflected into any better price differential of realization, he does not also bother to uh, improve his quality at the form level. Again, uh, um, there have been some criticism on a, uh, on a direct uh, uh, procurement procedure because there can be a heavy dependence on the institutional buyers by the farmers. But again, this is a, an, uh, at best should be seen as an alternative uh, process of uh, giving a farmer his um, being not exploited the way he is being exploited in the mandis and also to see that an alternative process is developed for him. Again, one important uh, methodology and mechanism that is also being uh, promoted by the government is contract farming, in which there is an agreement between farmers and wholesalers at a predetermined price and also in turn for getting that predetermined price and as a part of an agreed agreement. The uh, buyer also provides a number of uh, uh, incentives and number of components under a technical support. This starts from giving him a good seed or a planting material as the case may be, giving him the other inputs of fertilizers, pesticides of the required quantity. Very often it has been found that a number of farmers use extensive fertilizers to boost their production. In the process, they lose the soil fertility. But in this case, since a buyer who may not be having his own land um, uh, uh, is able to punctuate this particular thing because he has a larger and a sustainable contract to be um, uh, kept by him and therefore, he is able to punctuate him, he is able to guide him uh, on the various uh, processes uh, so that his uh, um, uh, particular thing is optimized. Further, uh, uh, the farmer also is able to uh, uh, adopt to uh, new initiatives because of one reason that he knows that if he uh, spends some more money and is able to roll out a quantity of better quality, he is going to get better remunerative prices for it, which is not the case in the traditional system. And therefore, he also becomes case sensitive to such initiatives and this paves way for a longer sustainable uh, uh, proposition for him. Also on the part of uh, uh, the buyers who are corporate houses, who are institutions and quite often it has been observed that they also invest substantially into the, such infrastructure and there have been many cases where uh, these private houses, these private companies who have been, uh, who have entered into a contract forming agreement with uh, these people have provided for a number of cold storages, processors houses, value chain, so that not only they benefit, they are able to rope in good quantity and good quality of produce from these farmers. And also, uh, besides this, uh, there have been cases where this contract farming has been working to the benefit of both the buyers as well as the sellers. Further, there has been a legal framework for agricultural marketing. The legal framework uh, is that the APMC, which is an Agriculture Produce Marketing Act, which is promulgated by the various state governments, imposes restrictions on buyers and intention to protect farmers from the exploitation of the traders. The exporters, processors and, uh, and the various channels are regulated and to ensure that the farmers get the good price. Enacted in almost all the states in the 60s, uh, probably over a period of time with the new advent and uh, the lot of crop which is coming up with the a lot of uh, produce which our country has been able to get. The APMC Act now calls for a very serious revision and that is the reason that the government of India has enacted a model act and has asked all the state governments to correspondingly make their changes so that the model act becomes more responsive to the current needs of the agriculture marketing. 
the and uh, the amendments to the existing APMC Act, so that uh, the socio-economic implications, which affect and impact about 60 percent of our population, almost directly, are benefited. A very close analysis at this show that there is a lack of uh, the required number of private participation into the markets and the market linked uh, uh, processes, which is again not seen as being very attractive to corporatize or to put a lot of industrial impetus on this particular uh, market. And therefore, um, uh, uh, this has to be carefully taken further and uh, some of the um, new examples have been the creation of the model terminal markets and also the advent of the retail industry in the country which aims at making certain linkages with the farmers so that uh, uh, the, uh, the more opening is given and at the same time this opening also leads to uh, uh, a very important chain is not only the former but the consumers also so that they are able to get uh, uh, good quality and in the right quantity at the different centers and thus agriculture marketing provides a very cardinal link the various policies are constantly being evolved the the various uh, infrastructure framework commensurative with these policies is being enacted though it comes at a very huge cost but it is worth investing in and we are very sure that over a period of time with an equal support from the various state governments, the agriculture marketing channels would be further streamlined and enhanced so that this very important system is able to not only benefit our huge population of farmers, but is also able to provide a competitive at a competitive price our uh, agriculture produce to our consumers. I am very sure that uh, uh, there would be many queries on this particular aspect and this can be answered by going uh, to the managed website for further clarification. Thank you.